Hi there, this is the news that Ionic React is now in general availability, which would suggest that it is stable and no longer in an alpha or beta version. What does this mean for you? Well, it does mean that you won't have to worry about some big breaking change without Ionic, obviously stating beforehand that this is going to be a particular regression or change in the API. I myself am very excited for this because it does mean that I can use Ionic React on my React projects in the near future. If you are interested in why React and things like what about React Native and of course the Cordova change using Capacitor, you can of course read the article yourself. We're going to skip down to the bottom here which says getting started and we're going to create our own Ionic React application. So let's jump up and head over to the terminal and get started. So the first thing we'll need to do is run npm install dash g ionic. This will install the ionic CLI globally on your machine. And of course it will use the latest version. Once you've done that, we can say ionic start my app. And when we say my app, we'll be given a choice of framework, either Angular or React. We'll select React at this point. Next up, we'll be given a starter template to select either blank, side menu, tabs, or conference. If you're creating a project on your own, I'd recommend either using the side menu or the tabs, depending on the style of interface you want to start with. Or if you're not bothered about that, or you haven't made a decision on that, I would select the blank starter project. Because we haven't used Ionic React before, potentially, or even Ionic at all, we're going to select conference to have a look at what can be done inside of Ionic. We can then CD into the directory, that would be change directory, and by CDing into my app, we can now say code dot to start that up inside of VS Code, and at the same time, run Ionic Serve. Ionic Serve starts a local server, and we'll be able to see our application. Ionic Serve starts a local server, and we'll be able to see our application inside of the browser. So here we have the Ionic React application on the right and the code on the left. There is a reason why I have this taking up about three quarters of the screen. You can see that there is no side menu button here, but when we change the screen size, we do get that side menu button appear and we can select the side menu. If we select an item such as Ionic Workshop, we can see that we are given this new page. If we go back, we can see the animations. So it does flow very, very smoothly. Each one of the UI elements should match their Android and iOS implementation. You can see we have the tabs here at the bottom. And if we select something like map, we can see that we have a Google map. That means that we can use any JavaScript browser based library. So we aren't limited to specific native things here. And that truly is one of the powers of Ionic. If we select the about tab, we can see we have an about page here. If we select location, we have of course this pop up, which meets the iOS and Android design guidelines. As far as the code itself, it's broken up into various different components, pages, we also have the Redux store here for this project, as well as any utilities. If we jump into a page such as login.tsx, we can scroll down and see a standard Ionic application. We'll have things like an Ion header, an Ion toolbar, Ion buttons, a title, and so on. That would be the header part of the page, such as this about page here. Then the content underneath this navbar will be in something called an Ion content, and then of course, for any sort of UI element that we will need, we will be using the Ion X components. These will be things like Ion list, Ion item, Ion label, including even things like the toolbar buttons and so on. So Ionic does pretty much have an answer for anything. And after using Ionic for about four years right now, most of it in production, I can say that I would suggest this as a iOS, Android, web, whatever platform based framework that you want to use. You will have a performant application that works across pretty much anywhere that you need as well as support for UI elements that do change based on their platform. So that's how we can get started making an Ionic React application. I hope you found this useful. If you have, let me know inside the comments. What do you want to see next? Do you want to see some Ionic React content? If you do, let me know as well. Thanks a lot. I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye.